Coming up on today's show, it's the best of Italy in Cleveland. That's right, we're going all over Northeast Ohio to find Italian food, Italian coffee, Italian shopping, and everything in between. New Day Cleveland starts right now. Ciao. That means hello in Italian. That's right. Welcome to New Day Cleveland. We're spending today's show pretending we're in Italy and visiting local businesses with Italian roots. And first up, what's more Italian than pizza? That's right. We're starting our road trip to Cristadas. Cristadas is authentic Italian Sicilian food in your everyday neighborhood with a bunch of very close-knit people that are like a family and trying to serve the community as best we can. It starts with small plates of cheese and meats, handmade arancinis to your big salads uh, with homemade dressing, pizzas obviously, as well as a lot of homemade pastas. And I think that's the big draw here is the homemade. It's authentic, you can't find anything like it. You go to another restaurant, there's store-bought noodles, and I, I think you could really taste the difference in those things. Good afternoon, Cristadas. It's about bringing very authentic uh, Sicilian-driven dishes that you can't really find anywhere else. There's a lot of Italian places on every corner, but you know, when you, you try it here, you could, you could really taste that, and I, I think that's what separates us, and I think that's why it's important to keep that going. Every day at about 2 o'clock we, we come up with a pizza that we want. It's different from the day before. That's where we come up with ideas. Uh, we have a pizza of the day. Customers know to ask if you have a pizza special or anything like that. And we're always trying to come up with new ones. It's been a real joy coming up with them. The first one is a Bianca pizza we would call it, but it, it's got a, a dulce addition. It's got fresh mozzarella, gorgonzola, grana padana, chili flakes, a little bit of honey drizzled on it, and then it's cooked, and it'll caramelize and look very good. Next one is an alpina pizza. It's kind of a long-running special we've been doing here, but it's my favorite. It's a red sauce. We cook the prosciutto. You add gorgonzola again, cook that. When it comes out, you finish it with a balsamic drizzle and a pinch of arugula. Looks beautiful and tastes very good. Another thing which is new to our menu is a, a gnocchi pasta. It's a potato gnocchi. Uh, very simple to make, very savory. It melts in your mouth. You can get it with pesto, garlic and oil, marinara. That's been very popular and been working very well. And then something you can't leave here without is some arancini. It's sticky rice with pork and beef and peas, fontanella cheese, parmigiano reggiano, wrapped, breaded, deep fried, and then served on marinara. It makes a unique crunch and very savory, and people can't get enough of them. We have to make them every single week. There's a lot of love and care that goes into it. You'll see my face to welcome and greet you every single day. I like being a full-time pizza guy here. Cristadas is located in Highland Heights. Okay, now make your home one of a kind with one of a kind decor. Solari has art, dishware, jewelry, and a whole lot more, and it's all made in Italy. Solari is a place to shop for amazing finds and one of a kinds all imported from Italy. We have a very wide range of items in price, and from every, almost every region of Italy. I think everybody deserves to have something that brings a smile to their face. Whether it's a spectacular mug, a beautiful bowl, whatever it is, why can't it be you? We can customize drinkware, flatware, linens, ceramics, home decor, we have at seven or eight different jewelry designers. Oftentimes, someone might want this necklace but a little longer or a different combination of colors. 
So many of the artisans that we work with can completely customize any size, any shape. They're very creative. They can take a vision and run with it. What we'd like to show to customers are room-like settings so that they can kind of envision the home decor and functional works of art that we have on display in their own home. We set tables and try to explain to people that matching is not exactly what is the best policy. You wouldn't put the same painting on all four walls in a room, so why would you put the same plates on four corners of a table? I think that a really good reason to stop by and visit us is to get the feeling of warmth and the feeling and exuberance of Italy on a gloomy day or even on a sunny day, but just stop in and say hi, share your experiences with having traveled there or ask for some advice about how we can help somebody accessorize their home. We can pick up a few things and try them in your home and we can help you pull other things that you already have in together and get you started on doing the finishing touches, which to me has always been the most important thing. You can completely repaint, recarpet, refurniture, everything else, but there's no soul in the room until you get the accessories in place. And don't forget, Solari can custom make anything you'd like. Just check out their website or visit them in Rocky River to learn more. Still ahead, Italian pastries, where to get sweets and a gigantic cannoli. Welcome back to Italy. In Cleveland, we're headed to Brunswick, and this is one of the most authentic Italian bakeries you'll find outside of Europe. Check it out, it's Rito's. Rito's Bakery is a family owned and operated bakery. We've been uh, in existence for over 57 years, third generation bakers. We're the most authentic bakery you'll find in the area. Our specialty, we're well known for our cassata cakes. The most popular cassata cake is the strawberry cassata. And that's kind of an Italian American thing. The original cassata from Italy is made with cannoli filling, but the strawberry cassata was born here actually. We have a tiramisu, we have a coffee uh, mocha one, we have uh, the regatta that I mentioned. We make a spumoni. Ever since the Food Network, you know, these novelty specialty cakes are very, very popular and you got to go to a really a customized bakery to get something like that. You can't really go to a you know, grocery store uh, to get that kind of customization, which we do. We're making a core Somali cookie, which is like a, an almond bar cookie paired well with coffee as well as wine. It's a great accoutrement to, well, if you're drinking wine, to dunk it in our angel wings, which is a very, very popular item here. Every nationality has their version of this kind of uh, pastry. You know, it's fried dough, just rolled in powdered sugar. My dad started the business. He immigrated from uh, Italy in the 1950s. He always wanted to be on his own, so he, he started his own business. We've all, you know, bought into put in the best product, we worked very, very hard to get to this point. You know, with everybody pitching in, all our cousins at a young age, everybody kind of worked in the family business at one point. And it was a, it, it's a great thing to look back on because there's a lot of work here and we're the kind of last dinosaurs hanging on and uh, hopefully we'd try to carry it on as long as we can. I think we're the most authentic bakery because we have old world recipes that have, you know, uh, withstood the taste of time. We're probably well, most well known for our cannoli. Uh, we make what is called a gigantic cannoli, which is a huge cannoli shell filled with three dozen 
smaller cannolis. We're very particular, we make our own shells, uh, fry our own shells, and it's very unusual because it's a very tedious process. Each one of our shells has its own little personality. We show our shells in the case without filling because we try to convince our customers to take the filling home and fill them as you need them because you want that crunchy first bite. You gotta try our cannoli. We have our own sauce line, as you can see right behind me here, that we were making it in-house, but we couldn't keep up with demand, so we had to uh, kind of manufacture it. But it's our recipe. We do make our own lasagna here. And we have the variety of, you know, Italian imported oils, pasta, uh, those type of things, cheeses, as well as meats. We're just trying to maintain the, the quality and service that has kept us in business for 57 years. We want to keep on going for as long and as hard as we can. Well, we had a great time at Rito's. I even brought back a little snack, a bit of a surprise. We're at Little Italy Wines. I love it. We're here with Matt. And uh, you know what I love about your story is you come in here and I see wines I've never seen before because you have so many Italian wines. Yeah, we have a good, uh, real good selection of Italian wines, well over 500 different wines from every region of Italy that you can get them from. Yeah. There's a couple that, uh, that don't ship much over here, but almost every region we have many wines from. I think it's great because in the olden days, everyone talked about the French wines and then it was the American wines, the California wines. But I think people know less about Italian wines than any of the others. Well, I think now it's going the other way. I think uh, that people are learning more and more about Italian wines and all the different grape varietals that are in them. And, uh, and they're much more affordable in general than French wines, although that, that's going in a little different direction with some of, the, some of the varieties. Okay, let's celebrate. Let's open this baby. All right, this one here is a Prosecco. Torricelli. Let me touch it. That's the cold one. Yeah, but okay. we didn't want to open the warm one. No, we got to do this right. And uh, this comes from the Veneto, up close to Venice. It is I'm going to stand made, back here just in case. It is made with the Glara grape. That's the grape varietal. They used to call it Prosecco, but then they decided to go by the real grape name, which is Glara. So then you got to get a good twist on this, and which is one thing. There, it's coming now. Because you don't want to fly it across the room. No, you got to do it slowly. Here it comes. Are you ready? Well, I usually let go at that oh, point. Okay, there I we didn't. go. There we go. So then again, Torricella is the is the uh, is the producer in the Veneto. So this is it. We're going to taste this, baby. We're going to taste it. Why not? We opened it, we'll right? Salute first. So good to see you in your beautiful store. Good to see you too. So that's nice and light with a hint of sweetness, huh? Right. It's a, it's, it's a, it's a brute style, but this brute style has a little bit more fruitiness, I would say, more than sweetness. Okay, so this would be a good celebration. It's a good dessert. A lot, a lot of good items there. You know, walking around your store, it is like, you're like being in a wine cave. I mean, it's tiny. It's got all this stuff. Everything's crushed together. So it's, it's, a, it's a cool experience, I'll tell you that. Well, we do have a, a, a lot of different wines. So this is the, this is the next one we're going to try, right? The next one we're going to try is, 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 a, is an Alianico. That's the great varietal. It comes from the Basilicata, which is just between the it's heel and Italian. the toe. It's a little Italian. <laughs> between the heel and the toe and just above uh, the, uh, the, the center of the, the boot. Right. We're working the boot. So then okay. if you want to dump, you want to use Oh, we can do this? You can dump. So here's what you do. For, oh, okay. It's pretty good. Yeah, that wasn't if enough there, to worry about. If there's any dregs dumping. in there. Okay, there we go. Okay, here we go. So the next that's one. That's a sad again, moment. This is Lato. That's the name of the wine. It is an Alianico grape varietal. Ooh, it's dark. It's not as dark as the next one. Ooh. See, we're journeying through Italy right here. And again, this is Alianico. This was a very popular grape varietal uh, for home winemakers in, uh, in the United States for a long time. Uh, but, but the California version is so much different. A very earthy style. Yeah. Smells great. It would go very well with light roast meat dishes and things yeah. like that. It's delicious. Yeah, it's very easy drinking wine. Hey, I have a question for you. So we're doing this all Italian show here on New Day Cleveland. Do you think it's a good idea to include wine? Uh, I think it might be. A, uh, if think, you didn't do it, it wouldn't be an Italian that's show. That's right. I think it's a pretty good idea. So guess what? We're going to come back with a whole lot more. More wine right after the break.
Okay, we're back at Little Italy Wines, and I call I called you Matt before, but I should really call you what? Matteo. Matteo. Uh, that's fine right. either way, but uh, people call I you Matt for Matteo. I like Matteo. Oh, they too. call me everything. Well, that's another. Story. We're in Little Italy, man. Let's go for Matteo. Tasted some great wines here. What should we try now? Well, I we have two more that we're going to do. I'm going to go with the with the uh, Sangiovese out of out of Tuscany next. Uh, we have a Montepulciano coming after that. You say those like songs. You sound like a singer. <laughs> I believe that we should go with the with the Sangiovese because it's a little bit San lighter. Sangiovese. Sangiovese. How many Italian wines do you keep here? Uh, about 550. 550. Now that's yeah, about 550. That's a, that's a pretty good dose. So did this is this wine a little lighter in color than the other one? This about is the similar same? to the other one, and yeah. it's a Sangiovese. Those grape varietals like Alianico and Sangiovese are kind of similar in in body, but they're they're definitely very different in so you flavor. Know his stuff or what? Hey. Oh. It's nice and soft, yeah. easy drinking. Uh, yeah, it, it's just like a Chianti, but it's just outside of the Chianti. You could pair this with anything. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. Is this is this one of the more good, popular good Italian pa wines? Good pasta wine too. Yeah, oh, I love that. Right. It's almost it, it would be a, a Chianti if it was located in a little different region. Ah, so that's that. The same grape. Same grape. There you go. Chianti. Okay. What's the What's the last one we're going to taste? The last here? one that we're going to have to dump. Okay, let's do it. We're going to need one more. It's like a sin to the grape gods. Something like that. Okay. So the last one, we could do that up front here again, is uh, Miramira Montepulciano di Abruzzo. So would you sing that song again? <laughs> Miramira Montepulciano di Abruzzo. I love so it. So Montepulciano is the grape varietal. It comes from Abruzzi. This is darker. And this is the darkest of the ones that we're what, that we're doing today. It comes from Abruzzi. It's a little bit more full-bodied, very rich. And so this is the last one that we'll do for today. Eat, the, eat this one with meats. Yeah, this is the roasted meats, maybe have a heavier duty, maybe an osobuco, something Ooh, like that. I love that. Yeah, beautiful stuff. I love it. This is a beautiful show to work on, I'll tell yeah, you. It's a <laughs> yeah, I envy you. <laughs> you know, well, I envy you too. You're in pretty good shape yourself there, partner. Yeah, we yeah, have so a good that, time with So this. that is fantastic. Oh, I got a question for you. The bottles that come wrapped in the straw, are they good bottles of wine or what? Well, they're better bottles than they used to be. Let's yeah. put it that way. They're they're uh, they're a, a, a lower end Chianti. Then mm -hmm. they're they're all going to be Chianti because this is a Chianti bottle. Right. And that was originally done with really inexpensive and and very difficult yeah. to drink wines. They would be good with. They spaghetti. marketed it to look like that. Yeah. yeah. And so they they still make these, but they have a much better wine in them what, than what they used. That's to. great. But it is Chianti. Okay, so Rito's, the beautiful Italian bake bakery over on the west side near Brunswick there. They sent me these little cookies, and they said they'd like them in red wine. So are these good in red wine? Are they good in both, or what? I, I would I would do those with a white wine. I wouldn't do them with a red wine unless they were maybe a chocolate or a darker style mm -hmm. of, of biscotti. But a, a regular almond biscotti, I would do with the Prosecco in a heartbeat. You would do it with almost anything, but well, that's how I, good it is, I, right? Absolutely, I, as long as I have an excuse to drink wine, too. Well, uh, we've given you plenty of excuses. So we're on the top of Marie Hill. It's got a beautiful painted sign out there, like like the boot of Italy. And uh, we'll step down the steps, so it's almost like going to a cellar. you got more Italian wines than anybody in the city, and it is a great stop. And I really appreciate it, man. Well, I appreciate you being here, and I appreciate you coming. It, it's, been, it's been great uh, to taste wine. How, how do you say thank you in Italian? Uh, uh, how about thank you? It's, well, you grazie. say thank you, grazie. There you go. And then you say prego and say you're welcome. Oh, well, there you go, prego. We got it all, we got it all going on. Not the tomato on. sauce. But hey, how about some food? You ready for some food? What I, I yeah, mean, what? you look like you like to eat, right? Mm, I, I used to work for. Okay, here we go. We're gonna go have a nice little Italian meal at Devito's. Check it out. Devito's Market is a fourth-generation family business. Um, started with my grandfather Frank Devito's, uh, who had a small uh, vegetable cart in downtown Akron, and he started his business that way, and uh, eventually. Um, he moved into a slightly larger market and had some more diverse selections from which to choose. We have imported sharp provolone, we have uh, Locatelli um, Pecorino Romano cheese for your pasta. Uh, we also have Mortadella from Italy, um, Prosciutto from Italy. These things are uh, very traditional in um, uh, Italian families and other uh, ethnicities as well now. Salads that we make in-house, on-site here. Uh, pasta salad, we have Torlini salad. Uh, we have a, a specialty um, like a cheese spread that we make here uh, and just a, a multitude of different specialty salads that we make on site. And fresh bread we have, 
um, from local bakeries. Uh, we also have some pastries. We try to um, have a balance of foods, whether you're preparing your meal at home for a traditional Italian experience, or you want to make um, uh, deli sandwiches. Each and every day we sell between four and 600 sandwiches here. And uh, along with that, we have some wholesale customers that also buy. On any given week, we sell between seven to 9,000 sandwiches. So in the past, uh, people were more likely to buy you know, vegetables, produce, and, and dry beans and such to make their traditional Italian foods, but those times have uh, kind of evolved, and you know as well as I do that people like take and bake or uh, heat and eat foods and such, and we've focused a lot on that market, and uh, we do offer many items here today that are our recipes that are take and bake, so to speak, and of course come in and buy all the essentials to make your traditional Italian foods just as well. We've been in business for nearly 80 years. When I was a, a child, my parents lived in a home right beside the store here. And uh, it, we needed more parking. And I can recall very strongly when they took and up, uh, they raised the house up and moved it down the street to an empty lot. As you begin your turn in the system here, you get a greater responsibility and appreciation for what you have. Start near the beginning and then it's slow, the slow evolution of the, of the business and you're part of it and it's a very, very good sense inside. It's not out of the question to think that there may be a fifth generation. Our customer base is um, a variety of folks. Some are persons that have lived in this community for a very long time and they've frequented um, uh, this establishment from when they were young and until today. Uh, some people have moved away and uh, they'll have goods mailed to them because they're out of state. Uh, there, are sh there are customers still too. Uh, we have ethnic persons that shop, we have uh, professionals that shop, we have a very, very diverse list of persons that, that come here regularly and we're so thankful to have them. You can sense the, the family, you can sense as being a part of that family, and we have just a multitude of customers that come in here and we, they call us by name, we know their names, and I think uh, they want to buy local. Our people come in and we're happy to have them and I think they might be happy to have us. Davidi's Fine Italian Goods is located on Talmadge Avenue and that's in Akron. When we come back, I'm taking you to one of my favorite restaurants. You won't want to miss it. Back to New Day Cleveland. It's our very special show from Italy, but we're not in Italy. We're all over the Cleveland area, all Italian stuff. We're on Murray Hill right now, a place called Maxi's, and this is my friend Fatian. Fatian. <laughs> Fatian. I'm trying to learn how to say it. It's really <laughs> great, though. I've been here a bunch of times. My kids come here all the time. It's a wonderful spot, and we've got the chef in a little tiny kitchen. Boy, but you make a lot of food a here. A lot of food comes out of here. Everybody's surprised sometimes how so, much food comes so out. So who's of this, kitchen. and what is he making? All right, Chef Gary uh, is going to start us with a couple of appetizers: stuffed hot banana peppers. Uh, stuffed with Italian sausage, Parmesan cheese, little breadcrumbs. Ooh, look at that prosciutto on there, huh? <laughs> with our signature tomato basil sauce. Uh, he's going to make some fried mozzarella, which people love here. Served on, uh, on our signature tomato basil sauce. Our bolognese oh, with the pepper deli, fresh pepper deli noodle. The bolognese has the ground pancetta, uh, ground uh, pork and beef together there. And then, uh, of course, the veal salt in bocca some prosciutto, uh, onions, mushrooms, roasted garlic sauce. Sometimes people accuse busy, me busy. Sometimes people accuse me of talking too much, yeah. but I can't hear. All I want to do is listen. They listen to you tell me about this beautiful food. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Trying to stay focused as he's cooking. <laughs> yeah, boy, he's Start, doing a great job. Start, starting to smell real good now. So how many people can fit in this restaurant? When you walk in, it looks like a little restaurant. Yeah, I mean, we can fit up to 40 down here. We got a nice upstairs dining room that we use in the winter and yep. for private parties as well up to 40 people how about that patio in the and summer then the patio we can fit up to 50 people up there we're covering it uh this coming summer so hopefully we don't have oh, to, we don't have to worry about rain too much that's great and we can extend our season 
Hey, so people, longer. so people talk about different kinds of Italian food. They got the north, they got the south, they got the this, they got the that. How would you describe the food that you guys have here? Yeah, we, we are more northern. We are more northern Italian, you know. And what's the difference between northern and, and southern? The ingredients are different, you know, and in this uh, the southern food is good too, you know. But uh, you know, we we focus on the north. So uh, I think looking at all this food, I think. The northern food must not be fattening because there's not a fat man in the joint. How is that? Why is we that? Look, move, you're so skinny, man. We move a lot, I guess. We move a lot around. You're hard working. Hey, so why don't we let Chef put these dishes together, these plates together. We'll go out to the bar. We'll get a couple of, uh, glasses of wine, and Sounds we'll take good. a good look at the dishes. Sounds good. I Thanks. like that idea. comes this is what it's all about at Maxine We're, this is just the appetizers we're picking <laughs> yeah. up like 18 people right <laughs> and this is your brother yes so good so yeah all family here <laughs> that's great okay so what were these that we made fried fresh mozzarella okay so you put yeah. that on the table and people yeah, people try that fresh. Huh? oh you gotta try it yeah how about you, you nice when's, when's crispy, the last time you had delicious some? <laughs> little wine should we have some wine I think it's a great <laughs> idea so how many different kind of wines do you have here uh, we got about 45 to 50 bottles of wine. Do you have anything from Italy? <laughs> <laughs> Just a few. That's great. That's great. I'm going to try this thing. Oh, we got to make room for that. So let's bring it in. Come on. Let's go. So this is, how, this is how it is. Hey, so when folks come in here, do you help them order so they know how to order family style, so they don't order like of one course. thing? With one yeah, thing? That's, that's the tradition. You know, a yeah. lot of our regular customers and, you know, uh, a lot of return customers that you know we know every single day when the door opens we yep. gonna know a few of them uh, it's crunchy but, on the outside yep yep that is and really uh, good. the best way to do is to start to share you know yeah share a few dishes unless the i'm gonna bring this in into the middle here just yeah. check this out folks i gotta show you this so tell stuffed, me about it stuffed hot banana peppers boy that looks uh, fantastic stuffed with italian sausage parmesan cheese it's great over the Signature tomato basil sauce. And we sauce saw this baby being put together in the kitchen. Oh, yeah, yeah, that's the pepper deli bolognese. Bolognese? Yeah. Uh, you're you you're know, famous house, for that, too, favorite. aren't you? Yeah, house favorite, this one. Yeah, well, that Absolutely. one looked pretty good to me, too. <laughs> yes, I don't know. <laughs> I like it all. <laughs> yeah. My yeah. kids love the frog legs when they come here. The frog legs, I mean, yeah. The frog, like frog legs. Th frog legs are very, very famous. It's very, very famous here, you know. Okay, so it's Maxi's. We're on Murray Hill, which is called Little Italy. Yes. This is my friend. Let's see if I can say it now. Fadian. Fatian. Fatian, I almost got it it's right. Okay, you're close. You know what I can't get right? <laughs> biscotti. Biscotti. <laughs> you like you like the hard biscotti or the soft biscotti? I like the hard ones. You got it. You got to dip it a little on that. Not the espresso, these. You know? Check it out. These are the soft ones. <laughs> The biscotti, it's uh, between dry and soft. We call it miscotti because it's miscotti, it's soft. It's a cookie. It wasn't cookie uh, with the flavor before, but now everything is changing. It's a biscotti recipe, but uh, we don't use any oil. We change all the oil to butter. I make it soft uh, for everybody. It's a cookie, you don't have to drink anything with it. If you want, you can. But I want everybody to have and try the biscotti. We have, first we have around 32 flavors of biscotti. And we have scones, we make cookies too. The most popular flavors for biscotti is the lemon cranberry, almond, pistachio pecan, orange walnut, and we have the chocolate brownie. The raspberry always goes with these three, uh, six flavors. Each recipe, it takes time to make it right and how we want it. It's who makes it. It's not, it's not just the recipe. I put my heart in my uh, baking. It's been 18 years. And if you try all the biscottis, you see all of them, it's same texture and same thickness and same size. We're going to mix the two sugars together. We, uh, we add the baking powder with the sugar. I mix them with the butter. We add the uh, eggs and we mix and we put in the end, if we're doing chocolate, we'll put chocolate. And they will go in the hopper and it will push them out, make them loaf. We take them off the belt, we put them on the trays, put them on the rack. They go in the oven for uh, half an hour. We take them out, we cool them down. We put them, we put them on the cutting machines, we cut them and we serve them. Miscotti offer all kinds of uh, packaging. We do uh, bulk for the stores. 
They come, they, uh, they buy them by pieces as much as they want. And we offer them for uh, individually uh, customers. We go up from six pieces to hundreds, hundred pieces in the, in the package. I'm the only one here. Uh, everybody was surprised how much product we make with one person. Uh, but we have the right machines for it. Uh, one batch makes a thousand, thousand biscotti. I can do it in half an hour. When they try my biscottis, the biscotti, they, they will be surprised with the texture. A lot of people, they don't want to try because they're hard. But when we tell them soft, they don't believe it until they try it. And they all love it. They all buy it because it's soft. I love it. I love to work. Uh, I love to bake. Uh, especially what, what I love to, I love biscotti. I eat them every day, that's my lunch. Uh, one, one at lunch, one at night with my cup of uh, tea. Uh, I love what I'm doing. You can order from Miscotti online or follow them on social media to see when they'll be at a pop-up location near you. We're going behind the scenes at a local meat market, folks, right after this. Show's called Italy in Cleveland, but now it's Italy in Aurora. Is that right, Brad? That's right. We're at Missoula's. This is a place that started how many years ago? Uh, this store 14 years ago in our Bainbridge location 26 years so ago. So it's all about your father-in-law started it. Absolutely. You're a lucky son-in-law. Yes, I am his favorite son. No, no you, you should be. Hey, I tell you what, anyone who walks in this place, Missoula's in Aurora, you're going to be shocked at how beautiful it is the first, first, first step inside. When you get a look at the meat case, this is one of the most beautiful meat cases you ever saw, and they aren't messing around. So the meat looks like prime, but is it? Is it? It's choice. It's choice. It, it looks it, like prime. It's the high end of choice, the, the highest 10% of choice. So I saw some short ribs and they're, they're not short, they're long. <laughs> that's right, but we can cut them down. Yeah. We have our, our meat cutters will cut them to, to whatever you need. And that's what's great about this. We're talking about old school meat cutting. It's not like going to the grocery store where you get a package and whatever's in the package is what, is what, what you, you get. get. Right. Exactly. Okay, so who makes the meatballs? We make the meatballs from scratch each and every day. Okay, I love that. I love the chicken breast, all that. And uh, I see some as all his own chicken Italian sausage, huh? That's for the health conscious, which is very important this time of year. I like the poultry in there. And we get down here to the pork. I mean, this is really great. So is this how your father-in-law set this up when he first started in the old days? It's evolved quite a bit. Yeah. Is that the old man up That's there? That's the old man. I see him up there. <laughs> the recipe from Brooks' great-grandpa over 100 years ago. Okay, and you got the cold cuts, you got the cold cuts, you got pasta, cheese, you got all that kind of crazy stuff. But I think one of the great things to find here, too, are the prepared foods. And, and I just want everybody to know, I, I, we make all these salads and our entrees, everything from scratch. I mean, our chefs are second to none. Look at this know. poor lady, she can't even make a choice. There's, <laughs> there's, a lot there's of so many choices and she can't even make a choice. Right. Yeah, so look at all this great stuff. So Look, look, look at this power salad. So this is awesome for the, the new year. I see some mozzarella hiding in there. <laughs> right. What else is in there? This is not a, that's a bowling ball. It's not a meatball, it's a bowling ball. That's chicken, so that's chicken marsala meatballs. So inside that ball, is actually it's made with chicken and it's actually a marsala ball okay, look. and then our homemade lasagna we make from scratch our cheesy meatloaf our cutlets we make every single day okay so here's the thing we see all the great food out here you got a great kitchen in the back you remodeled it lately and all that yep, right absolutely well Brooke promised me one time she's gonna show me how to make sausage it's time it's, it's on? time it's time let's go let's go well Brooke I didn't know what to expect here but uh, this this looks like it's a pretty tricky process. So what's Christopher doing here? It is. So he stuffed the sausage stuffer and put the casing on the tube on the end, which there's different sizes, so we can make different sizes of um, sausage. And now he's cranking it out. He's watching for any kind of air bubbles. Oh, because all your stuff is perfect. It, yes, exactly. Hey, so when I walked in here before I took a peek, I saw big pork butts in here. So what, mm -hmm. what, how, what makes the sausage? What do you use to make the sausage? So we like to use the pork butt because it has a nice blend of fat, mm -hmm. so it isn't dry. 
and by grinding it, it kind of mixes all the different meat muscles together so we can get a nice even consistency. So you chop it up, mm -hmm. so Christopher will chop it up with the knife mm -hmm. and then he takes it back to the grinder yep. in the cooler mm -hmm. and brings it out and then what, what's all the, what, what all the seasonings you put in it? So it depends on what flavor we're doing. So for the Italian, obviously there's fennel in it, salt and pepper, um, and then whatever flavor we decide, then we add extra ingredients. Like this one we did hot, so we have crushed red pepper. We do Sicilian sausage, so it has sweet red peppers, scallions, and shredded Romano. So now Chris is um, linking it. So believe it or not, this is a little bit of an art because you gotta make sure you go opposite way. That's why you guys wouldn't let me do it. Exactly. Because it's, it's an art, right? Exactly. You can't have anything in the case out here at Missoula's that's not perfect. We're all about perfection. It's all perfect. Here. Okay, so we only have a couple seconds left. How do I cook this stuff? So you just bake it. Old school was boiling, absolutely not. You lose all the flavor, so you bake it right on a cookie sheet, um, 350, a little bit of water on the bottom for about 30 minutes, and then you can add your peppers and onions or whatever other fancy ingredients you want to do to it. Another good thing about Missoula is you come in here, you need to know how to cook something. They know how to do it because they do it all back here in their custom kitchen. Fantastic stuff. You can take it home and do it yourself. It's a wonderful time to come out to Aurora to see you at Missoula. We appreciate it. And I just love that meat case. Folks, you got to come out and see it. Thank you. Thank you. Mazulos has locations in Aurora and Bainbridge. And don't forget, you can check fox8.com for a list of all of today's featured businesses. You're going to love this next place. It's a cafe, a gelato shop, a wine bar, and a pizzeria all wrapped up into one. This is Cafe Arnoni. Cafe Arnoni is an Italian coffee shop. Well, my cousin Michael and I, we are the owners together. We obviously love coffee from the beginning of our entire existence, our lives. We have been back and forth to Italy quite a bit. We have family in Sicily. Um, we both were fortunate enough to study in Italy separately. He studied in Florence. I was in Rome. Um, and when we were there, we both fell in love with um, the lifestyle of going to a coffee shop. You go there in the morning for a little cup of espresso. Again, in the afternoon, um, you have a cup of wine at night, a little pizza. So we knew that there was nothing like that around here. There was no true, authentic Italian coffee shop. Um, and we knew that we needed to bring that to the local areas. So Italian coffee is meant to be um, really sipped and savored. Um, the roasting process is completely different over there in Italy. We get all of our beans pre-roasted from Italy. So you can really appreciate the taste and the flavor profiles that we're getting from these high quality beans. One of the first aspects of our business was the food truck that we started in 2014. Um, when you think food truck, it's not typical what you think. It's actually just a mobile coffee bar. We have gelato, pastries as well. It's available for booking for just private events. We have Sal's Gelato. That is named after Michael's son, my nephew. He's the first person we go to when we're coming up with a new flavor. He gets to try all of them. So he may only be six years old, but he is our number one critic. <laughs> Gelato is um, Italian ice cream, um, so it's a lot richer, more creamy, a little bit airier texture as well. So we spin it fresh in-house every day. Um, we have five flavors that we keep on the menu year-round, and then a couple of seasonal rotating ones as well. We um, just added a pizzeria and wine room. We have Italian wines. Um, all regions of Italy. We have a really amazing cocktail list and fresh made pizzas in house too. We really pride ourselves on our dough. Um, we have a really amazing homemade sauce, um, some really nice small plates as well. We have this Italian marketplace that you can either shop online, arnonimarketplace.com, or you can come in the store and shop some of these amazing handcrafted Italian products that you can't find anywhere else in the States. Some amazing glass pours, really great retail list as well that's available for purchase um, all day. You can come in and shop, find some of the best uh, wines that you can't find anywhere else um, around here. So it was our way of kind of supporting other local Italian businesses that don't really have any exposure to the international markets as well. We have all walks of life that come here, to be honest. We have an amazing group of regulars that come here. We have amazing date night that come here. Hot chocolate for the young kids. We have drip coffee. We have just a shot of espresso. We now have amazing pizzas. It's open at five, so if you want to bring the kids at night. My 
my mom and Pa Arnone, they were our great grandparents. They were the first ones to come over from Sicily in 1914. The family is huge to us. We want everyone that comes in here to feel like family. We treat all of our employees, all of our customers like family. We really pride ourselves in being um, a place of refuge for everyone. We said that, you know, there's a lot going on in the world right now, but as soon as you walk in these four walls, we kind of want it to be a safe place where you can come and enjoy a nice cup of coffee, a good glass of wine, some nice pizza, fresh made pastries, refreshing gelato. So. Uh, we kind of want to offer a little bit of something for everyone here. Cafe Arnoni's Pizzeria and Wine Room opens in the evenings, but they serve coffee and gelato all day. Our road trip is winding down, but we've got one more spot for you. That's right. Stay tuned for something Italians can't cook without. Wine is not the only thing that comes in bottles in Italy. Mm -mm. Most important thing is probably olive oil. Now I've got a place that's got it all. It's called the Olive Scene. The Olive Scene is an extra virgin olive oil and balsamic vinegar tasting emporium. And we carry the world's finest extra virgin olive oil and a significant array of balsamic vinegars from Modena, Italy. Since I have Italian heritage, we used olive oil for nearly everything. So to me, this was just a normal way of cooking. When we started the olive scene, I really remembered more of my roots and those colloquial ethnic dishes that I grew up with. Olive oil has brought to the American diet many new and different ideas now that it's more readily available and it's more recommended by the health industry as the fat of choice. This olive oil especially helps us to have healthier, faster cooking and we always say think outside the salad because olive oil is so much more than just a component of a salad dressing. Olive oil can be exposed to high heat, you can high heat saute with it, you can even fry with it. And so since the olive scene can bring you 30 different flavors, if you want rosemary fried potatoes, we have an oil for that. If you want chipotle fried tomatoes, we have an oil for that. And the flavors just are endless. At the Olive Scene, we have lots of companion products. So most of our products can be used as an appetizer, as an entree, as a side dish, in conjunction with an olive oil and vinegar combination or using just one or the other. The reason that we encourage our customers to come to the Olive Scene to buy olive oil here rather than anywhere else is because you get three superiors. So it's superior nutrition, superior flavor, and superior freshness. I think the most important thing that anyone should know about the Olive Scene is that it's for everybody. If you are a gourmet cook, we have your back. We're here with new things that you've never seen before that will enhance your cooking. If it's a, a food trend, we're on top of it. And if you are a terrible cook, if you hate cooking, if you spend as little time in the kitchen as you can, we are here with the fastest, easiest, most flavorful helps for you. Because a piece of chicken and a flavored oil will get you dinner. And at the Olive Scene, we'll help you do it. We'll make sure that you discover just how good healthy can taste. The Olive Scene has three locations in Northeast Ohio, or you can buy online. Well, guess what? This is it. We've shopped, we ate, we've had something to drink. And I think it's going to wrap up our Italian adventure, one of my favorite shows. I love Italian stuff, and I hope you did too. I'm David Moss, and we'll see you on the next New Day Cleveland. Ciao.